Colin Powell's death serves as a reminder as well about the importance of vaccinations. Powell died from complications due to COVID-19. Now, he was fully vaccinated, but he was also elderly, 84 years old, and immunocompromised. Powell had several underlying health conditions. He had multiple myeloma, a type of blood cancer that can weaken the body's ability to fight infections. He also had Parkinson's disease and had surgery for prostate cancer when he was Secretary of State. In short, he was precisely the type of person we are all trying to protect by getting the vaccine ourselves. Philip Bump of the Washington Post writes, quote, it seems ine inevitable in this moment that Powell's death will prompt new indifference to the vaccine as though his death somehow proves that the vaccines don't work. The lesson we should learn instead is that the vaccines work best when they work broadly and that had Powell been protected both by the vaccine and by low rates of infection in his community, he might still be alive. Joining me now is Dr. Kavita Patel. She's the former White House Health Policy Director under the Obama administration and an, MS an NBC News medical contributor. Excuse me. Dr. Patel, explain to us why General Powell is an example of why we should get vaccinated and not why the vaccine doesn't work. Yeah, Zerlina, it's exactly as uh, Philip wrote and you commented, number one, Vaccines really do work when a population, a community, an entire group of people get vaccinated. We talked about herd immunity kind of earlier in the pandemic. This is really what herd immunity references, that the more people out of 100 people, if 90 people are vaccinated, it can protect even those 10 that either are not vaccinated or in the case of General Powell, he was not able to probably mount a sufficient immune response because of those chronic conditions you mentioned. We know that persons with multiple myeloma uh, compared to healthy people achieve anywhere from half of the effectiveness of COVID-19 vaccines or lower. So they're just coming out of this fully vaccinated as he was, but not anywhere near, Zerlina, what a healthy, even healthy 84-year-old might be able to mount. So that's why everybody around is critical. And honestly, it's a good reminder that this virus is still incredibly active and incredibly opportunistic in places where we have lower vaccination rates, as well as lower numbers of people who have an appropriate immune response. And it's, a, it's also a reminder of why we're talking about boosters and third doses as well. So one of the things that I keep seeing come up is this goes back to when, you know, the president announced that if you're, if you're vaccinated, you don't need a mask outside. I remember that moment because a lot of people were like, we told you, you weirdos out here walking around with a mask on. Don't you know you don't need that? Why are you being such a wimp? Um, and I always like to remind people that, number one, you, you can't tell if someone has an immuno, is immunocompromised by looking at them. Um, and two, you don't know if they live with someone who's immunocompromised. Can we just sort of, for the record, like, put a marker down <laughs> and explain to people why, like, if you see people out of the grocery store with masks on, you should not judge right. them. They could live with somebody who has, you yeah. know, it, it is immunocompromised. Absolutely. At least 4% of the United States falls into these categories of people with chronic conditions. And Zerlina, honestly, it's even higher than that, most likely, when you take into account people who are elderly, people who are recovering from another illness. This is exactly the population. And you're talking about it. And Zerlina, we don't walk around with a big scarlet letter that says, I live with someone or I have an immunocompromised condition. I bet most people watching and seeing the general on television or at speaking events would never know that he had gone through a number of these battles with serious chronic conditions. So you're absolutely right that, uh, in fact, my patients that have had solid organ transplants for which they are considered immunocompromised, mm -hmm. I have had to give them the bad news that they need to have their household wear masks, exactly to your point, and that they, no matter what the CDC says, they are gonna continue to need to keep taking precautions, even though they've had three doses, not just two, three doses of vaccines. So you're right to remind us, we have to celebrate what vaccines do, but we also have to remember that that not everybody gets that layer of protection. And especially as early, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. We're still only at about 58% of the entire country. That includes children. So 58% of the country being vaccinated. We have a long way to go to give the protection to the general pals of the country. So if we have a long way to go, 
are we supposed to do Thanksgiving this year? Halloween, Christmas? Like last year, remember, it was pretty clear. It was like, right. stay home with the people in your household. Do, don't do Thanksgiving. This year, it seems unclear because right. of people like General Powell and also because people are going to spend time with family members. And sometimes that includes elderly parents or grandparents. I think you hit the nail on the head. You have to think about who you're spending time with. A couple of things. We do have much more data around children being able to safely trick or treat outdoors, especially with their space. You know, it's actually perfect if you can have your kind of children, uh, you know, separated from all the other trick or treaters by going door to door, but not by coming up close and close contact. And children can wear masks as part of their costume. So that actually can work. But I think to your point, Thanksgiving, holidays, Hanukkah, anything where you might have an unvaccinated household member or someone who is at high risk, strongly urged to consider either quarantining before you travel, wearing masks indoors where appropriate. And then Zerlina, we're finally able to talk about testing, making sure maybe people even get like a rapid test. It's, you can't test out of COVID as a reminder, but it can offer, if you're doing it with a household, offer layers of protection and reassurances. So my message for Thanksgiving, get together if your vaccinated household can talk about doing it safely. That is a world of difference from a year ago. We couldn't talk about this because we didn't have vaccines, mm. but we still have to be safe. It's a really good point. Rapid tests are, are a good thing to have around the house. It's just good to sometimes check in, <laughs> make sure everything is good. Dr. Kavita Patel, thank you so much for being here tonight and please stay safe. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.